So this will be just a case presentation mastermind on the case presentation formula. And so what we were just talking about is sales. Dentistry has a sales element to it, whether we like it or not. We can call it case presentation, consultations, whatever that is. But at the end of the day, we just don't want to be pushy salespeople where we say, you need a crown. That is pushy sales that we want to avoid. So to get around that and navigate sales in a way that's healthy, we use this formula. There's two facts when this where this where this really comes from is understand that people buy for their reasons, not your reasons. So I call this the why. And when you do your emotional SWAT, right? You're familiar with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You go, you know, tell me what you like, describe what you don't like, um, uh, explain to me what it would look and feel like if it were ideal for you. And then right after that, there's this question that I came up with in 2007 with the guys. It was, why is that so important to you? Mm-hmm. We don't say how that make you feel or would that make, you know, it's, it's why is that so important to you? That question okay. has to be asked specifically that way. And so that's why I call it the why. You may call it dominant buying motive. Right. Okay. Same thing. All right. So people buy for their reasons, a reason why, right? It all makes sense. People buy for their reasons, not your reasons. So before you can ever present treatment, you have to have understood what that is. Okay. All right. So let's see. Number two reason people don't buy a solution or treatment to a problem they don't perceive to have the condition. Right. So what that means is when we're doing our exam, we're doing over here psychology, that patient has to hear the condition over and over and over again. And and the consequence to that, you know, has it started to hurt you yet? Oh, that's right. great. We're catching it in time, those sorts of things. Okay. So we don't just walk into the patient and say, you need a crown. That's what this is talking right. about. This is the 95-5 rule. So 95% of the time we're focused on the condition and consequences, only 5% treatment. That's why the lines moved way over that way, right? Yep. So that we don't ever get in a place where we're just putting treatment in front of it. Oh, you know, you look in their mouth quietly and going, okay, you need a crown. That's not going to work. Yeah. What we do is we're talking to the assistant over and over and over again about conditions we see so that the patient can hear it and understand it. We don't use dental jargon, limiting terms that are like, you know, MOD amalgam with defective margins. You know, let's put a, a buildup and crown on that tooth. The only right. thing they hear out of that is crown and then they just hear dollar signs and it messes the whole thing up. They're not focused right. on the problem. So this would be where you do condition focused. And then when we get in the case presentation formula, I never talk about the 5% until the patient gives me permission to do so. So I'll show you what that formula looks like. Let me just skip through this one. Don't cross the line. So what this is talking about is don't cross this line right here, this treatment line. Don't talk about treatment until the patient says, yes, I believe I have a problem. And yes, I want a solution. Okay. So don't cross that line from 95% to 5%. So if you think about how much am I talking about treatment versus how much am I talking about conditions and consequences, it should be a vast, just a huge exaggeration to be focused on condition. So this is that formula. And like I said, we wrote this (laughs) way back when, uh, when we were redoing the level two program. And so we take that why and we start with that. If people buy for their reasons, not your reasons, then we should start with that. Right. So when I use, when it's in quotes, why, what we're talking about is using the word important. Okay. And so I say, I know it's important to you to have peace of mind. You don't want to end up losing your teeth like your grandfather did. I know right. it's important to you to have a, a great job interview coming up. I know it's important if you have that confidence in your smile, whatever that is their why, we're going to place that in front of the conditions that are blocking them from achieving that. Okay. Okay. Now, in, and I'm going to show you the, the other handout here in just a second. The condition, we use the word concerned. Uh, so I'm concerned about the gum disease, the decay, the fractures, the missing teeth, lay those out. Mm-hmm. So the word is concerned. And then in, because of what those lead to, the consequence of that is toothache or tooth loss. Those are the only consequences we're going to deal with in dentistry. Now, aesthetically, you might have some consequences. Somebody's just worried about how it looks ugly. That could also be a consequence, but that's more just aesthetics. Yeah. But gum disease you know, leads to tooth loss. Decay leads to toothache. Those are the things we're going to be concerned about because they lead to. So we're, we're staying in that 95% realm. Yeah. And, then, and then we test the buy-in. We say, how concerned are you with those things? Okay. I'm looking for three yeses. Oh, somebody wants in. 
I think Brett's so joining us. So still not even like talking about any treatment whatsoever. I'm not brought up treatment. Why condition consequences and yep. reiterating why is it Something, worth it? You know? Yep, exactly. And they've seen they've seen the. I'm getting feedback here. Brett might be listening in two places. I'm not sure. Brett, are you there? Oh, yeah. Should I? I I got on my phone, but maybe I should hang up. Yeah, the phone's great. Get rid of the other one. If uh, uh, you know what, just then mute, I can't. <laughs> mute, uh, mute the computer. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Yep. So yeah, Kelsey, you're, you're exactly right. It it's it's not talking about treatment till it's time. Now they've already seen the X-rays. They've seen the intro photos. They've heard in the over here psychology's condition. So I'm really summing it up. But I've never brought up whitening. I've never brought up veneers. I've never brought up crown. I've never brought up implant. Yeah. Any of those things. So I go. Yeah. You said this was important to you. This was what the concern was because it leads to this problem. And then I'm looking for three S's. I say, how concerned are you with those things? And the reason that's an implication question, con concern, I'm implying that they're concerned. And right. the reason that it's open-ended is I don't, I don't want it to be a yes or no answer. I don't want them to go, yeah, I'm concerned about, you know, it's just like this, this simple right. yes. You know, they can yes right. you to death and you really don't know if they're in or not. No, right. Some people you can't read. They're like, uh. and you just think, oh man, if, if they're not, <laughs> you, you like what I, you know, working up front, you watch them walk out the door and you go, they're not coming back. <laughs> yeah. that, that <laughs> They was, scheduled. Scheduling. Yeah. They said they were going to pay, they scheduled and everything. And you go, I just don't feel it. So it eliminates that as well. And you get a real yeah. gauge on where the patient is. So how concerned are you with these things that we discovered today? Yeah. I'm really concerned. That's the first one. And then, then I say, would it make sense for us to talk about a plan on how we can take care of these things? Yes. That's my second yes. Now I'm moving across that line I was talking about. Now I'm moving yeah. into the 5%. Okay. So yeah. now they say, yeah, I'm concerned. Yeah, I want to solve it. Okay. So here's the treatment plan. And you can see I use Ted's trust curve in this. Yeah. So don't violate the trust curve, meaning I would never go... Uh, this, would be, this would be violation of trust curve. I would say, well, I know you're concerned about, I know it's important for you to have peace of mind. I'm concerned about the fractures uh, in, the, in the back teeth because that could cause you to break those teeth, lose them, massive toothaches, whatever it might be. And so my recommendation is for you to go ahead and do four, you know, four crowns on the right side, four crowns on the left side. Why don't you go up front and see Betsy and she'll get you scheduled. And yeah. you hear how that was that violation. I just pushed right through it. Yeah. Right? Okay. So I can, I can check, I can check the temperature of the patient's acceptance as I move along. So I say, you know, how concerned are these things? Yeah, I'm really concerned. Would it make sense for us to talk about a plan and how we can solve this? Yes. Here's the plan. So I talk about the plan. These are all the things you guys are comfortable talking about now, all the treatment. Right. We would do this, we'd make this, do this, we'd solve this, we'd fix this with this. Right. The third yes is another question. Now, We've heard lots of types of questions in the past. I have my own version of that question and you guys probably have your own version. Things that I'm not comfortable with, but I will review are, would you like to get this done right away? Would you like to get that scheduled now? Do you see any good reason why you wouldn't wanna go ahead and get that scheduled? Those are things for me that are yes or no's that I'm not comfortable with. I think the next level is again, a yes or no. Would it make sense to go ahead and move forward with this plan? I'm, I'm okay with that one, but mm -hmm. the one I love is, has the word feel in it. Okay. And the reason for that is because it's, it forces it to be open-ended. I, again, I eliminate the, the yesers and I just right. go, how do you feel about moving forward with this plan and getting it scheduled? It's really hard to lie with the, yeah. Yeah. They've got to give me more than that. Right. Right. So, yeah. So let me show you what this looks like here. I want to minimize this. And this is that handout I was talking about earlier. Let's see if I, oh, psh, I got to use the right computer. Here's what happens when I use two computers. All right. That's not the right one. Let's see. Here it is. All right. This is the case presentation formula handout. I think I emailed this out. If not, I can send this to you. Okay. And this is just using the same steps that you saw earlier, right? But it's giving you the scripting that would go with it. Okay. So earlier you said it was really important for you to have peace of mind. Their reasons, not my reason. So the keyword is important. I've capitalized it. I bring that up because I'm concerned about what we talked about during the exam. And I showed you on the intro cameras, you know, the, the gum disease, the fractured teeth, and you could 
do all of it. You don't have to do it one thing at a time. You could lay it all out for them, all the concerns. The reason I'm so concerned about those things is because, you know, that gum disease, that's the number one reason people lose their teeth. That's really going to affect you wanting to have that confident smile, right? Uh, I'm also concerned about the active decay. It's not going away and it's hard to be confident we've got a massive toothache. So I go through those that way. And then let's see, you test the buy-in here. So I say, you know, how concerned are you with stopping this? Yeah, I'm really concerned. Then right here, wouldn't it make sense for us to come up with a plan? Yes. Here's the plan, 5%, boom, 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 boom. How do you feel about moving forward with this plan and getting it scheduled? Now, those are my words. I'm not saying those have to be your words. I think the words that are in capital are really important to use. Yeah. So if you look at this, how this is broken down, what's important to the patient is first. Getting them to buy into concerns is second, the condition, mm -hmm. because of the consequence that it leads to. And then I'm asking them, are you on board? Are you concerned about this? Yes. Would it make sense to solve it? Yes. How do you yeah. feel about moving forward with it? So the, that's, that's the flow. You think about how the human brain works and processing things. We operate in two types of purchases. You probably heard this before, a push purchase or a pull purchase, right? So a push purchase is need. You need new tires. You need to get gas. You need to pay the bills. You need to, uh, I don't know, need a new hot water heater. Right. Okay. These are things that are thrust upon you in the world. And they're not something that you actually plan for. Right. Pull purchases, a want is something that we want. You probably could, you guys can know this, right? Finish the sentence, right? I want to go out to dinner. Dinner. Okay. I want to go out on a date. I want to go on vacation. Vacation, right? These are things <laughs> that we want to do. We yeah. save up money to do these things. We'd rather right, save right. up this money, right? Okay. So, uh, Brett, I want to go skiing, right? That would be a finish uh, sentence for Brett there, right? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yes, exactly. So, these are things we're okay spending money on. Now, need versus want. Where does dentistry lie organically? Well, pain means need. Yep. Everything else is want. <laughs> Aesthetics is want, right? Yeah. So, we're somewhere in the middle. Now, when a patient has no perception, they don't wake up in the morning and go, you know what I want to do? I want to go get a crown today. They don't do <laughs> that, right? That's not a normal right. process, but we want to move them into the want category. So if you notice here, this is leading us towards a want perspective, right? We're taking what you said you wanted, what was important to you, right? That, that emotional SWAT, mm -hmm. okay? finding out what, what they want and why they want it and putting that in front of all the concerns we found that are found that are going to prevent them. And so this is a way to, to really mold the two of those things together, the need and the want together. So I never tell a patient you need something. Okay. I'm only focused on what they said they wanted and why. And okay. I'm fitting all of those things we diagnosed in that. So how that sounds is if, if Kelsey's my patient, right? And earlier in the SWAT, you said that you wanted just to, your teeth were healthy. In your mind, your teeth were healthy and you just wanted to keep it that way. And I said to you, Kelsey, why, and this is really you, right? I said, why is it important for you to maintain that health? What would you have said? To keep my teeth my whole life. And did you know somebody who didn't keep their teeth or is it just important to you for a specific reason or? Yeah, my dad has lost some of his teeth. Okay. And, and I don't ever want to have to do Go through that plants and all of that if I don't have to. <laughs> got it. Got it. So there's some peace of mind knowing that you're going to prevent issues if, if you maintain your teeth. I totally get it. Now, let's say during the exam, over here, psychology, intro photos, all that, we discover, we'll make it simple. Let's say, let's say you had some, even some white composites done and it's just time, right? Okay. Yeah. That's a tough sell. But we know there's a problem there. We can see defective margins. We've talked about it. You can see different things happening there. Maybe even some chipping. So I've showed you those pictures. So it's not new news to you. You've heard it before. So I say here, I say, Kelsey, earlier you stated to me, it was really important for you to just have peace of mind, knowing that you were going to maintain the health of your mouth, that you weren't going to end up losing any teeth, right? Yeah. 
And I bring that up. Yeah, I bring that up because, you know, I'm concerned about those older fillings that you've had done in there. And they've they've served a good purpose in helping you maintain your teeth. But but the reason I'm concerned about them is because of what's going to happen if you don't do anything about them soon. Those fillings could fall out. The decay is underneath there. It's going towards the nerve of the tooth and then a toothache. Have you ever had a toothache before? No, but I don't ever want to experience it. Okay. All right. And you, so you're familiar, you know, root canal and those sorts oh, of terms. Yeah. We don't want patients to end up going down that path. So Definitely I'm, not. I'm concerned about there's there's six old white fillings in there that I'm concerned about that if you let continue to uh, progress down the path they're going to, that could end up with some some bad news and, and some issues that I know you don't want to deal with. So how concerned are you with stopping that from happening right now? I'm concerned. I, yeah, I don't want to have any root canals. Okay. All right. That's fair. So why don't we come up with a plan then on how we can stop that? How's that sound? Sounds good. Okay. So what we would do is very similar to what you had done before with the process, except we'd make one change instead of putting uh, composite material, filling material in there. We'd act, and that is, uh, we'd actually bond a porcelain uh, product in there called an onlay. So that way we don't have to remove a lot of tooth structure, which would actually weaken the tooth and make it more susceptible to tooth loss in the future. So we'd be able to maintain as much natural tooth as possible while putting the strongest product bonded to your tooth as possible. That's called an onlay. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that sounds it's, good. It's, it's, it's actually more precise than doing a crown. It's very similar to doing a crown. It takes um, a lot of experience and, and a, a specific skill set to do it just just as well as a crown, but yet saves you two structures. So it's right in that same category, but yet a better decision for you. Um, that sounds great. Health-wise. Okay, great. So uh, how, do you, how do you feel about moving forward with this plan then? I, I feel like we should probably get it taken care of. Okay. All right. So, and you might ask how much is it going to cost at that point? Right. You know, those sorts of things. I yeah. want to set when, on, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, when people like ask us that, Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes like right now, if it's like in a hygiene check, I tend to say, oh, well, um, you know, Debbie will go through all of the costs with you mm -hmm. or Mandy does all of our costs and she'll tell you all the best ways to save money. I'll say stuff like that, but I, I do you feel like mm -hmm. getting into it with the, the cost with them more like from the doctor is good or bad or it doesn't matter. Well, let's talk about this more. Brett, what do you say? Well, I know. Paul says, and I, you probably agree with Paul. I think we're probably kind of skipping a step um, when we do that. Um, is that is that what you're going to say, Eric? Yeah. yeah. Well, I want you I want you guys to do what you're comfortable with. First of all, I've got some doctors yeah. that are phenomenal at talking finances. They're just really good at it. But I also mm -hmm. want you to do what you're legally obligated to do and get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because they don't know complete, I mean, if you guys know the dollar amount, then great. They might just simply be asking. Now, what I say is this. I say, is it, is it that you're wondering about how to make it affordable or are you just curious about the cost? I just throw a question out there and they go, oh, I just want to figure it out. I go, okay, great. I just want to make sure you're comfortable with this plan and then we can give you the dollar amount up front. We'll go over it and we'll figure out how to make it affordable for you. How does that sound? What I want to differentiate that, is, go ahead, Brett. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of, first of all, we, you know, we have a few people in our offices that are really skilled at kind of closing everything up. Yeah. Um, but what you said is kind of where I leave and, and, and head out the room. I try and sniff out some um, objections yep. right, right there um, because obviously, you know, um, when I'm talking to the patient and then the objections come up with Mandy or, or whoever. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very fine line here. And you got, first of all, you gotta do what you're comfortable with. If you're horrible at talking about money, then don't even try to get into it. You know, I'm thinking broad, broad here, you know, it could be hygienist, could be doctor, whatever. But I will say this, it's really good the patient asks how much is it? Yeah, because that because means they're I'm, considering it, right? Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. If they don't ask how much it is, I'm actually worried. <laughs> so be prepared for that question. And, and so then what I'm just trying to do is differentiate, do they believe the plan is valuable? 
and they just want to figure out the money or are they not really sold? And well, if it's not super expensive, I'll do it. Like I just try to decide between those two. So obviously <laughs> with the fish tank, I have a hobby that um, it has a price associated with it. And I have three fish tanks and my wife is like, no more fish tanks, right? She doesn't value them. <laughs> so value equals benefit minus the cost. You know, uh, my wife grew up uh, skiing with, you know, family that skied, you know, in Maine, all that kind of stuff. California, uh, yeah, you, you couldn't uh, get me to do that. So uh, Leah's phone center entering the waiting room. I don't know who that is. Okay, so we will ignore that, I guess. <laughs> so I'm just going to uh, lock the meeting. All right. So the, the point being value. All right, so, so value equals benefits minus the cost. So I enjoy sitting in my office and just having some time to enjoy the fish, right? That's just a hobby for me that I enjoy. She would enjoy spending the money to go downhill skiing where I wouldn't enjoy spending the money to crash, right? So the, <laughs> area rugs, uh, cars, anything, dentistry included. So if your patient doesn't have a benefit minus the cost value, that's a positive. It's a, if it's a negative, they're not spending the money on it. So they might say, yeah. I value dentistry up to $1,000. And after $1,000, I don't value it anymore because I don't see the benefit. Mm -hmm. And if you're yeah. simply just presenting treatment, you're going to run into that a lot more than if you use something like this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So think in terms of this. I'm trying to figure out, is the patient on board and they just want to figure out how to make it affordable or are they trying to decide if they value it or not? Right. How much is this going to be? Oh, that's a great question. I'm so glad you asked. That's the next start of the, of the process. As soon as you and I agree on the plan and you're hundred percent on this, we'll put it together and then we'll figure out how to make it affordable for you. Does that sound right to you? Does that sound okay to you? Yeah. So you're in on this plan. We just need to figure that part out. Okay, great. Let's do that. Then I got Betsy. I got, you know, whomever it is to go over the options with you and they're a magician. They'll figure out exactly how to fit this into your budget and make it work for you financially. Does that sound okay with you? Yeah. Okay, great. Now, if they're like, well, I'm not sure I'm in on the plan. It depends on how much it costs. They're comparing the value, right? Mm -hmm. Benefits minus the cost. So I say, okay, let's talk about it. So this plan, you know, if you just look at total costs would probably cost you, say I said eight onlays, right? I just make it up a number probably cost you about $10,000, give or take, Kelsey, it's in that ballpark. Uh, having said that, you know, dentistry is amazing at figuring out how to put that into a budget, a monthly budget, you know, something that's affordable. But when you hear the $10,000, how do you feel about that? Open-ended question, right? Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts? Something along those lines. They go, I would never spend $2,000 on my mouth. Some people say that. <laughs> Possible. Yeah. It would be contradictive to what she said earlier about not wanting to lose teeth like her dad did, right? Right. That would be contrary. So I, I don't know that that would happen, but I might not have someone who's like, my wife sent me in. I'm just doing this because my wife said, you know, one of those, right? Oh, I have gum disease. Yeah, I'm okay losing my teeth. My dad had a denture. I have soft teeth. You know, all those things we hear, right? So I would say to them, okay, so you said $2,000 is your spending limit. How much do you think extracting the teeth and doing dentures would be? I'm just curious what your thought is. I play it forward, right? It's called play it forward. They would go, oh, you know, a couple thousand probably. Okay, well, surprise you to know, that's probably about a $5,000 treatment plan to remove all your teeth and do two dentures. And the denture is going to last you about, I don't know, 10 years maybe. And then you would spend another probably $4,000 every 10 years. Um, you know, wouldn't be comfortable. You would, you know, lose your, your taste. You wouldn't taste anything on your palate. There's a lot of negatives to it. So as far as saving money in the long run, I don't know that that's the best option for you. But if that's the choice you want to make, it's your prerogative. Permission statement, remind them of that, right? It's your choice. Mm -hmm. Now, I've got to be comfortable and confident in doing that and showing them, I'm just going to compare apples to oranges and giving them price. Yeah, one is 10,000 now and one is 5,000, you know, every so often. Right. So show them what that is. Now, if this plan is going to be 10,000 every 10 years, then you got to compare that that way. Mm -hmm. But but that's why I think it's important to say, are they just wanting to know, hey, can I fit this into a budget? Or are they just trying to say, do I value this treatment plan or not? You've got to differentiate that, I think, chair side. 
and then decide when do I hand this off to someone else and when do I re-engage and say, I need to redo this treatment plan. Yep. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so yeah. These, yeah. Are, these are simple steps. Yeah, simple steps, the way the brain moves. And I think it's easy for you to think about if you just remember these, these key words, important, concern, leads to, right? And then how concerned are you with this? Yeah, makes us talk about a plan, yes. How do you feel about doing this? So do you guys have this sheet for me or should I email it to you? Um, you um, to me. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be good. All right, let's, let's just do it. Little... Yeah, I'll email it to you guys right now. Okay, so questions about this. Um, the questions always just, are the questions are dynamic, you know, it's like, it's always when, when you get um, into the situation. It could be, it could go a lot of different ways, right? It can go so many ways. And the big thing that I, I think that I've learned more recently is just, you know, getting, getting the patient to, to open up and sort of start accepting what you're saying. Cause you know, I can, I, I'm getting to the point where I can see when that's happening or if it's not happening, uh, that to me is just step one. Like, mm -hmm. do you, do you notice that Kelsey? Like, uh, yeah. Is the person like what, connecting with you and you know, yeah. I yeah. know. This is where your, your disc comes into play, right? For sure. Yeah, this is where your disc comes into play, your heart rate, your ability to be connected with someone earlier on. This is why I don't yeah. want them to hear treatment in the overhear psychology because it's too soon for them to think about, do I want to give this person my money or not? I need, you know, Ted did a great job at talking about this with the trust curve and that steep trust curve and the elongated trust curve and all those things. And there's some people who are just very steep. They're ready to get married right now. They just met you on a Friday. You get engaged yeah. on a Saturday. You get married on a Sunday, right? And there's other people that just yeah. take a longer time, but you got to read that. We're asking them to marry us in about an hour. You know, we're saying ten thousand right. dollars an hour after we met them, and you know, if there hasn't been Funny a great that, referral source and everything, it makes it harder. Go ahead, right. Brett. Yeah. Well, I was just gonna say it's often those those people where the trust curve is super steep. They're they can often be the shape, shakiest patients, and then um, the ones with the more graduated trust curve, they they tend to be a little bit more challenging up front, but once you got them, they're like rock yeah. solid. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Those are the people who've been your patient for years already, right? They've already seen you several times. They've like been around the environment and, and they've done their research and they're very cautious. You know, the D patient who comes in or the I patient comes in, it's like, bing, bang, boom. And then the I flakes off, the D changes their mind, you know, whatever it is that can happen. Yeah. And that's yeah. why Another reason you want to make sure you use real open-ended questions because of those flaky people. You know, how do you feel about this plan? You know, how do you feel about scheduling that, this plan? How do you feel about moving forward with this plan? I think that really creates some dialogue. Now, we're kind of getting into objection formula too, which is fine. I think it's just really important that we don't see a question as an objection. How much is going to be? That is simply a question, not an objection. You know, how long is it going to take? Mm -hmm. we want to answer the right question. And so we typically will follow it with a question. I use, tell me more about that. So somebody yeah. says, well, how much is going to be? Well, tell me more about what you're thinking. Are you thinking about just trying to fit in your budget? Or are you thinking about like, is this, you know, what you want to do this plan or tell me where you're at. Just throw something out there. Mm -hmm. This could be totally random. Tell me about what you're thinking. Is this just trying to figure out budget wise? And they'll, they'll, they'll update you. They'll say, oh, well, I just need to know. I, I'm ready to go. I just need to figure out how, to, how it's going to be monthly. Oh, okay, yeah, we got that figured out for you. Uh, if you like this plan, I'll lock it in. We'll get it up front. They'll get you taken care of and go over all the options if that's okay with you. And I follow it again with a question. Yeah. So those are inquiries. Objections are typically at this point, if you've done DISC and Hargay and, and emotional exam and overhear psychology and case presentation formula, and you get to this place and you're starting to get an objection, it's probably something you're not going to have a great success rate of overcoming. You know, I think there'll be fewer of them, 
but the ones that you get are probably really stubborn objections. And so the objection formula, it really becomes a, a, a very, you know, even though it's important, it's a minor skill set to use because you're going to find that you're just going to discover life conditions. You know, I, I, I don't want to do this. I don't value it. Right. Or I want to do it. And, you know, I just lost my job because of COVID. Right. So I can't afford it. That's what we have to differentiate. And so that might just be a time issue that will overcome the life condition. If it's belief, I probably had a feeling of that the whole time. It just made sense that they would say, yeah, I don't value this. My wife sent me in here, you know? So making your wife happy is important to you. Am I right? Yeah. Okay. How does she feel about you saving your teeth? Oh, she thinks it's the, the smartest thing ever. Okay. And, and I'm assuming you love her and want to, want to do, you know, come to an agreement together. Yeah. Okay. So if you go home with this plan and talk it over your wife, what is she going to say to do? <laughs> right. And you just kind of have, have to have that question with them that yeah. conversation with them and not in a pushy way, just asking questions. So, yeah. The nice thing about, well, well, Brett and I being in a practice that's been around so long, like whenever I do a hygiene check, just like kind of going back to the trust curve, yeah. I, I always will say, you know, you know, Dr. Morgan had already proposed this and he had recommended it a year ago and, you know, it's just continued to get worse at this point. You know, I always throw in like Dr. Morgan already had recommended yeah. it because yep. they don't always like trust me, you know, yeah. then sometimes it's like, well, it feels better because they already have earned the trust from him. Yeah. So that's a, uh, using authority. So when I ask a patient to fill out a medical history, I say, Dr. Morgan wanted you to fill this out. Right. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would do, Kelsey, is I'd flip flop. Tell me. Yeah. So I would go with, you know, a year ago, Dr. Morgan was concerned about this tooth. Okay. Because of the fractures in it. I'm even more so concerned about it now because that's now given the decay even further time to work its way towards the nerve of the tooth. Yeah. And, and so I'm assuming avoiding a, a toothache is important to you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't know when, but at some point that decay is going to hit the nerve. So if you're okay with a root canal and doing all that kind of stuff and then the treatment, we can do that. But if you want to prevent the root canal, prevent the toothache, you know, we should really talk about this. So how, how concerned are you with preventing that? How so I just, yeah. That? I yeah. gotta use that. I gotta say yeah. it's so like, you yeah. know, you have to like practice, yeah, like yeah. actually like having the words come out of your own mouth. Yeah, yeah. So like, I'm gonna I'm really send you this. Tell yeah. me more about that. I say that like five times an exam, but <laughs> <laughs> Paula like beat that home one yes. day. Now I yes. like used it in my marriage and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah, you could say, you know, if your husband says I'm hungry tonight, you say, how concerned are you about uh, you know, <laughs> tell making Tell me dinner? more about <laughs> that. <laughs> How concerned are you with making uh, dinner for me? So <laughs> this is meant for you to get understanding of buy-in before we ever talk about treatment. So it goes back yeah. to the 95-5 rule. So you can do it in your hygiene exams as well. You ever have a patient, you walk in and they say, oh, don't find anything today, doc. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. So those are the external processors, the I's and the D's, who are actually saying that out loud. But uh, so 55 plus 15, what's that? 70% of the population, the C's and the S's are thinking the same thing. They're just not saying it. Mm -hmm. And so what we don't want to find is treatment. What we do want to find is what the problem is, the condition. Mm -hmm. So you look in there and you go, and you're talking to your, you know, Debbie, this is this tooth in the upper right. It's still, gosh, it's still not been taken care of. I'm concerned about over here psychology, right? I'm still concerned about this. You know, that, uh, that was diagnosed by Dr. Morgan last year, wasn't it, Debbie? Yeah. Okay. So now that decay's had a year to work its way around there. Debbie, what's the x-ray look like, Debbie? I'm just talking to Debbie, right? Mm -hmm. And that patient's hearing that. And then I, I look at the patient, I say, you know, Ricky Bobby, I know that Dr. Morgan was concerned about this a year ago. I'm even more so concerned about it now because it's uh, it's like having a, a, you know, in this case, maybe a, a nail in a tire with a slow leak. It's not gonna get better on its own. It's just allowing more things. And the, and the flatter it gets, the more air that releases, the more dangerous it is for a blowout. Mm -hmm. And so I'm concerned enough about this, but uh, are you concerned at all about preventing, you know, toothache and a root canal? Okay. So you are. Okay. How do you feel about talking about a plan then and how to stop this? Yeah. Okay. So here's what you could do. And then you can talk about treatment and then you say, how do you feel about moving forward with this plan? 
I personally like that. I should, I should, I should preface that. No, my, like that my preface is how do you feel about one for this plan? Um, some people say, would it make sense? Some people, you know, do the other options, you know, any, any good reason why you wouldn't want to. And that's totally fine. It's just your comfort zone. And ultimately it's what's comfortable for the patient. And I find that that's very universal when you say, how do you feel about moving for this plan? The D's gonna go, uh, yeah. The eyes will go, oh, it'd be so good. Yeah, awesome, dude. The S is, well, it'll feel so nice. The C, that's where you might say, would it make sense for us to move forward with this plan? And the C doctor, you know, is going to feel more comfortable using that question. But remember, that's 15% of the population. So you're, you're missing 85% of the people when you say, would it make sense? Maybe the D. So maybe you get 30% of the population when you do that. So how do you feel about moving for this plan is a great, simple question to be able to ask. So, mm -hmm. all right. I like that. So it's going to take some practice for you guys. So I'm going to email this to you and we'll, we'll get this uh, to you right away and then you guys can start practicing. Okay. Awesome.